Hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Trooper Jessica Tobin. I am a Pennsylvania State Trooper at a Troop K media station. My role as a community service officer entails um, a lot of training and education programs for the community, such as active shooter preparedness, cyberbullying, drug awareness, distracted driving, de-escalation, and many more. Also, what I'm responsible for is in any animal cruelty investigations that happen within our troop. I also take care of any PIO related duties, which stands for public information officer. So any event that the state police in True K has any traumatic incidents that need to be put out to the public, whether it was an officer involved shooting, um, whether it was a serious crash, whether there's a missing person. I'm the sole person responsible for giving the media any information that can either lead to the arrest of a suspect or just give information so the public can be able to contact us in the event that we are seeking out information. So without further ado, we're gonna talk about the roles and responsibility of our department as a whole. And we are gonna start off with this video here that gives you a little bit of a blast from the past, as well as where we came from and where we are at as a department now. Thank you. 
a lot of different information as far as the roles and responsibilities of our department. So we have many different functions that we've seen. We've seen K-9, we've seen Bob Squad, we've seen members of the bike unit, motorcycles, horses, aviation, boating, and more. Not a lot of people know that about us. We are a very complex, uh, multifunction department. So as far as our history, similar to what you guys might see on television in today's world regarding protests that turn violent and businesses may be looted and things of that nature. We had those same scenario occur back in 1902. However, this particular incident was surrounding what's called a coal strike. So at that point, the governor that you see in the bottom left-hand corner, his name is Governor Penny Packer. In effort to combat the violence that was taking place during that time, he decided to create a police force to be able to bring peace and order back to the community, hence the, the development of the Pennsylvania State Police. So we were created on May 2nd, 1905, and we started out on horseback, which we still utilize horses today. They are a very valuable tool in today's work. The gentleman in the bottom right-hand screen his name is Colonel John C. Groom. He was our first commissioner of the Pennsylvania State Police, which is our boss. He oversees all the stations within um, our department across the Commonwealth. So guys, right now we have approximately 4,719 Pennsylvania State Troopers across the state. It's a lot of people. Now, what we'd like to hang on to is what represents us and why we were created in the first place. Not a lot of people are aware of this, but every police officer can be identified by what's called their patch, right? And along our patch will tell you what area we in fact cover. Now, if you look at the patch on the screen here, it says Pennsylvania State Police, which therefore tells you that we cover the state of Pennsylvania, but we're special. We have specific colors and insignias that are their place in front of you that stand for something and that symbolize importance. So if we look at the color red that's behind our Pennsylvania coat of arms, that actually symbolates, symbolizes, excuse me, the bloodshed of our fallen brothers and sisters in the line of duty that gave up their life. We, all, we call that the ultimate sacrifice. So that is very special to us. The black that you see that takes up the majority of the patch, that represents the reason why we were created, the coal and the coal strike back in 1902. The Pennsylvania coat of arms, that symbol is placed on the Commonwealth flag so that we put that in our patch. And then also the stardust design that you see that encompasses the perimeter of that circle actually symbolizes our old bobby helmets. So they were like a metal militarized helmet, which had those little spokes that go across the perimeter. Now, when we look at our state as a whole, everyone, we could see that it is categorized by colors and letters. So we have 15 troops across the state, as you can see below. And we also have 89 stations throughout the Commonwealth. So if we look on the map, guys, we can see here Troop K, that is where I'm out of. And Troop K covers three counties, Montgomery County, Philadelphia, and where we live in Delaware County, okay? And then you could see the way it's broken down by county, what letter or it, which signifies what troop covers that specific area. So let's break it down a little further. We see the map of Delaware County, which is where we live. Now guys, which makes us different from the local police departments is that our coverage area is very extensive. We cover the entire state. When you look at these grayed out areas to our right here, these tell us that there are local police departments that cover those areas, such as Aston Police Department, Bethel, Marple Township, Radnor, et cetera. These white areas over here to the left of that map, that tell us that they do not have a police force, therefore the Pennsylvania State Police cover that area. So Troop K Media, we cover a total of five townships and two boroughs. 
And guys, when we look back on our video, what we displayed in the beginning of the presentation here, I took out a couple snippets of different types of specialty units that we have within our department. So guys, it's not all about traffic citations and enforcing traffic laws and arresting criminals. We have a lot of sub specialty units within our organization that help make us um, all work together as a team. So we have aviation, if anybody's interested in becoming a pilot, we have a marine boat, we have the bike patrol unit, FSU, which stands for the Forensic Service Unit. Those individuals are responsible for collecting DNA forensics. So fingerprints, blood, footprints, hair samples, skin cells, DNA that's specific to us. When you have a person who commits a crime and is no longer on scene, those identifying characteristics are unique to us, which then help us trace it back to the person who committed the crime. Then down here, we have a bomb squad member. We have our motorcycle unit. We have our patrol unit that's responsible for all 911 calls and crashes that occur within our area. CERT, which is our special emergency response team. They're specific to any type of hostage negotiation. Say if we have a bank robbery or we have an active shooter, um, they are activated to be able to assist us in those types of incidents. And then we also have our canine who is responsible for drug detection. This is very important for those of you that are sitting in this presentation who aspire to be, whether it's law enforcement, whether it's military, um, somewhere in the medical profession, this would be something that would interest you. So we have what's called a Troop K Camp Cadet Program. This link on the bottom guys, if you wanna go check that out, it gives you a little bit more detail of what we're about. So basically our camp is a seven day overnight camp. It is a very cool program. We get you CPR certified. We teach you how to shoot bow and arrow. We give you an opportunity to do real crime scene investigative work. We run you through obstacle courses, self-defense training, we have also a drill where we run you through um, actually operating a go-kart while experiencing the symptoms of what it would be like operating a motor vehicle under the influence of alcohol or controlled substance other similar to, or what we know as drugs. And then we also have other obstacle courses that require team building exercises and firearm training. So it's very, very cool guys. We are accepting applications. We are not having a camp this year, but our camps do fill up extremely quickly. So I would advise you to, you know, check it out and see if it's something that you're actually interested in. It, we base that camp cadet program off of how we train as Pennsylvania State Troopers. So if you look and remember the pictures from the previous slide, and now we do self-defense training, one-on-one -on -one combat, police tactics, and handcuffing, basic water rescue, running, and calisthenics. We do different types of obstacle courses, as well as getting pepper sprayed. So guys, with this, um, this little video here is going to give you an idea of what a day in the life of a trooper actually entails. Both of these individuals are troopers. This is a trooper, and this is a trooper in training. Now, this trooper, along with myself, are what are called FTOs. That stands for Field Training Officer. So we visit the academy when we have new cadets going through our program that are in training to become a Pennsylvania State Trooper. And once they go through the majority of their training, we go up there and provide scenario, real life um, training to ensure that they can be able to think clearly through the scenarios that are provided and put their training to good use, such as handcuffing, police tactics, communication, and more.
It's considered the launching pad for our statewide police force. Pennsylvania State Police was formed in 1905. Our motto is the first and the finest. And the competition to get to this training facility in Hershey is intense. Around seven to 8,000 people apply each year, vying to be one of the only 250 cadets who are accepted. The application is actually the easy part. Uh, after that, it took probably about a year and a half to finish the entire process. But once you meet all of the requirements, you're in and even get paid for the schooling. It's six months of what seems like non-stop training. Uh, some days they start at 3 a.m., 3.30, and most nights they don't end till 9, 10 o'clock at night. You want to help people, so you put up through this knowing that in the end it's going to pay off. Our starting salary is right in the ballpark of $59,000, and that salary increases pretty quickly over your first few years due to some contractual obligations. It takes a lot of hard work to become a state trooper. You have to make the grade physically and mentally and learn the law, especially in a day and age when almost every police encounter is captured on a cell phone. There's also firearms training, along with learning the reins around these guys, State Police's Tactical Mounted Unit. And one big component here at the Academy that plays out outside of the classroom, physical training, whether it's in the gym or outside. On your backs, move! Oh, by the way, their ab routines are no joke. Okay. She's killing me. Close! And similar to boot camp, someone is almost constantly checking your room, making sure your shoes are shined, your bed's made perfectly, and your clothes are just right. So if you miss a button on a shirt, uh, crease poorly, whatever it may be, they pull it out and they set it down in such a way that you can at least look at it. One sloppy bed-making day could lead to the loss of certain privileges, like weekend leave. <laughs> Newswatch 16 caught up with a senior class of cadets back in September during what's known as Scenario Week. Your way to call the cops on me. They put into perspective the last five months for us. My mother warned me about you years ago. Scenario Week is when troopers with years of experience come to the academy to play the bad guys. In this situation, I'm actually going to be the one that has the PFA against my wife. And they make it look real. No, you're here. House. I'm the victim here. Do you not understand? Experienced troopers say this protection from abuse mock call is an important training tool. They're one of the most intense uh, type of situations you can go into because there's all types of emotions that are going on between both parties. Here's another scenario. I don't, know, I don't know what you want from me. I want you to stop. But what? I'm going to arc that. But why do you want, why do you want? Betraying the role of a underage drinker. Trooper Suma even went as far as jumping behind the wheel of the cadet's police cruiser to teach them a lesson. Lock up your ride. Get out of the vehicle, sir. As soon as you saw me in that car, you should have came right around, got me out of that car, and put me in, slammed me against the wall and put me in handcuffs. I'm visibly intoxicated. I'm acting disorderly. This is my first scenario. It went not as well as planned. We got out of the car. I should have immediately called for backup. And while most cadet classes are made up of men, times are changing. So one of our current recruitment goals right now is to recruit more females and more minorities. I tell the ladies they can do it if they set their mind to it. I'm here, I'm, I'm a small female in stature. To learn more about the Pennsylvania State Police Academy in Hershey, requirements to get in, and how your family can visit the State Police Museum on the same property, head to WNEP.com slash websites. What? Am I going in the front seat? I'm Ryan Leckie, Newswatch 16, Hershey. So guys, as we can see there, that gives you a good representation of what a day in the life of a state trooper would actually entail, along with some of the trainings that we have to go through mentally and physically. So I hope that you enjoyed everything that I was able to share with you guys today in this limited time. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. My email is jetobin, T-O-B-I-N, at pa.gov. You can also touch base with your teachers 
and also make sure that you obtain that link that I sent you for any of you that are interested in participating in our Troop K Camp Cadet program. I hope you all have a great day and take care. Bye-bye.